This video will cover the Lumitrax function on the CVX series vision system. The Lumitrax is a combination of intelligent directional lighting, high-speed cameras, and an advanced algorithm within the controller. What this means is that the Lumitrax feature is able to completely extract all height information, which we like to call 3D inspection, as well as fight glare, fight any ambient light influence, and eliminate the headache when you are choosing your lighting solution. So how does the Lumitrax work? It strobes in quadrants like you see in this video as well as with the full ring illuminated. It takes an image at every strobe, it captures all these images, and it combines them to create what we call the shape image and the texture image. So I'm gonna show you how to take your normal image, turn it into an image like this, so you are only looking at height features, and I'm gonna have another example where I'm gonna show you how to eliminate glare in your imaging process. So if we go back to the normal image, you can see we can't see all the features, right? This could change, the lighting could affect it, so we're not gonna be able to stably read those characters. So if we go into the camera settings, I'm first gonna show you how to get to set up the Lumitrex technology. So it's only available on the CAHX series cameras. So you need to make sure that you have one of the CAHX cameras. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that Lumitrex is enabled. And if you click on the settings, it will take you into this. So you're gonna see first your normal image, your shape image, which extracts the height information, as well as the texture pattern image, which will fight the glare, which I will go into after this one. So as you can see, we are only looking at the height information, what's different on the level of the surface. So instead of me just going over what these settings mean, I'm going to build another shape image. So if you click add up here, you can add a shape two, you can add a shape three, you can add multiple images here. So as you're gonna see off the bat, it starts out gray, and that's due to this setting of the level. So that is 0 to 255 level, like the grayscale level, and that's what the brightness of the shape image is going to be. Since this image has characters that are beneath the surface, we are going to want to go up on the level to 255 so the image becomes white because anything that is below the surface is going to be black because of the shadows from the directional lighting. So I'm gonna go up in segments of 10 so you can see how this image is going to change. So you're gonna see it's gonna start becoming a lot brighter and you're vaguely gonna be able to make out these features, but we're gonna make them pop. So next is the feature size and the feature size margin. So the feature size margin is how much allowance is given for the size of the feature that we are emphasizing. This is on a one to five scale, and we're gonna bring this all the way up to five. You're gonna to start to see a little change, but not as much. And now we're going to adjust the feature size. You're gonna to start to see it pop a lot more. And we'll bring it up to 30, like I had in the other image. Now we want to bring out as much contrast as possible. That's what this next one is going to do. So as you go up, it's from 1 to 9.9. .9. You're going to start to see it add a lot of contrast to this image. But that is also giving us a lot of noise. That's what the last one, the noise cut feature, is for to eliminate all of this. This is a metallic piece, so there is going to be a lot of noise on the surface. So the more I go up on the noise cut, the more this goes away. And it looks like I don't even need to go all the way up to 45 like I had previously set. And we have a very good shape image extracting only the height information. Now let me show you what I am able to do with this shape image. We can read the characters extremely robustly as well as tracking this part all across our image. 
This is going to be another example of the shape image. We have an O-ring here, and, but instead of looking to read text or do any measurements, I'm actually going to look for flaws. It has a noisy background, so it's really hard to tell if there's anything on the surface above or below that is wrong with this part. But like I mentioned with the directional lighting, we are able to create the shape image and we're able to find flaws above and below the surface. So let me go into the settings here and explain it a little more. With the shape image settings, like I said, the level is going to be on a scale of 0 to 255. So if you're looking for flaws or text that could be above or below the surface, you're probably going to want to be near the middle at 128. As you saw in the first example, I was only looking for features below the surface. So that was going to be 255. If you're only looking for raised characters such as embossments, your level is going to want to be closer to zero. The feature size is always going to depend on how big of a flaw or um, feature text that you are looking for. Contrast is just looking to create the contrast in the image from shape, not from the actual color of the image. It's the contrast in the height differential. And the noise cut is very beneficial, especially for a piece like this, because as you can see in the normal image, there's a lot of color and information going on here. So with the noise cut, we're able to completely ignore it and only find this flaw here to show you that it's working. We are able to get a no good part with the stain tool, finding that flaw below the surface. Now, as you can see right here, the flaw is black. That is, once again, because the directional lighting creates the shadows where that flaw is. Now, if there is a flaw above the surface, that would be white because it would be closer to the light, so it's actually going to get more of the light, so it's going to be a lighter color than the level of the shape image. This next example will cover the texture image. This is the image that completely fights and eliminates glare from anything such as a shiny metallic part to a part in the food and packaging industry wrapped in plastic in a bag. So I am going to tweak the texture image and see right through this bag and look at this USB drive and the end result is going to be able to robustly read the text. So we're going to go into set camera once again in the LumaTrack settings and now we're going to add a texture image. A little more simple than the shape image, there's only the halation cut, which just specifies how much you're going to eliminate it, and then the contrast, which just increases the contrast of the texture image. So for this example, I'm going to turn the halation cut up to the maximum, very strong. You can see we're getting a clearer image, but it's not very bright. So as I go higher on the contrast, the image brightens up and here at level 5 are able to ignore any hot spots on the plastic around the part and able to completely and easily read keyants on the USB drive and we are able to detect that string as K-E-Y-E-N-C-E -E A few more things about the LumiTrax. There are some options here to one, track a moving object. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, it does take multiple images in a very short period of time. So some people think that, oh, my part can't be moving or it can't be moving fast. That's actually incorrect. If you turn this on, it's able to find a pattern from the first image that it takes and match that with the last image that it takes. 
So you can do it in something like this, although I don't have a moving application. It's able to track it throughout the image so that the image is not blurred. The next one is the ambient light cut. Lumitrax can completely eliminate the effect of any ambient light, whether the light in your facility may change, whether the sun can have any effect on it, this will eliminate all those problems. This is the one solution for your lighting needs. You will not need anything else to change your ambient light. I could strobe this while shining a flashlight at it and it's not going to change the image. Now these last two settings is the lighting count, which can change from the four quadrants to eight, and you can change the lighting width from narrow to standard. Now these are gonna be based on your part, so if you are having any difficulties at all, feel free to mess around with these settings, but they are very minor tweaks, as you can see. When I go from the lighting count four to eight, you're not really seeing much of a difference on this part. Overall, Illumitrax lighting is the solution you need for any front lit application. Even if you don't need to extract any shape information or cut glare, it functions very well as a normal ring light, three times brighter than the normal ring light. If you do need any type of 3D inspection, if you want to inspect the surface, or if you have anything shiny that you need to cut glare, Illumitrax is the right product for you.